Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we go over the differences of passive EQ versus active EQ. When we're talking about passive and active EQs, we're talking about how the circuitry inside of the EQs is actually causing the changes in the frequency spectrum. And there are pros and cons to using a passive EQ versus an active EQ, and vice versa. Let's dive into the DAW and take a look at some passive EQs and some active EQs. So here we are inside the session, and immediately you can see probably one of the most famous passive equalizers. This is the Poltec EQP1A. This has been used on countless records, and for good reason. It sounds really good. A passive equalizer only uses resistors, capacitors, and inductors to affect the frequency spectrum. And that's exactly what it's doing, is a passive EQ affects the entire frequency spectrum. Even though you may have a dial only at 60 hertz here, you're going to affect everything else that's happening in the frequency spectrum. Also, in a passive EQ, there is no boosting of anything. You might be saying, wait, Tim, I'm looking at this right here, and I see clearly a boost knob. Well, what this actually does is at the crossover frequency, right now set at 60 hertz, if I boost this, what it's actually doing is cutting every other frequency above this to bring those down, making the 60 hertz bump happen. In a passive EQ, because of the resistors, capacitors, and inductors, it can only do negative cuts. The way it gets its boost is actually an amp after the EQ circuit. In the case of the Poltec, it was followed up by a tube amplifier circuit. That's what gave it a lot of warmth. But the EQ circuit that's actually going on is just doing cuts. Now let's switch over to our active EQs. This is what you would see inside some of the large format consoles as time progressed and technology got better. The EQ inside of this channel strip and a lot of other channel strips in large consoles or on small consoles or as rack gear, these could have been active circuits, unlike the Pultec and similar passive EQs. What active EQs are doing is actually filtering out the target frequency and causing phase shifts using op amps and tubes and transistors and a lot of other things to cause that phase shift to happen around the target frequency and then either boosting or cutting it. Different manufacturers had different ways of doing it and they all had their own sound. This is why when you use those large format consoles, a Neve didn't sound like an SSL and an SSL didn't sound like an API, etc., etc. When you're using an active EQ, you really are affecting the target frequency and a little bit around it as well. That's dependent on your Q or bandwidth of your EQ. Unlike on a passive EQ, if we follow another 60 hertz bump on our low end here, it's not affecting the rest of the signal. It's only affecting 60 and a little bit of what's going on around it. A phase shift of the frequencies near 60 hertz and 60 hertz itself is what's causing that boost. Is one better than the other? I want to know what you think, but in my opinion, no, they have their different uses. Inside Studio One, we have a lot of different choices when it comes to EQ. If we're talking inside the FAT channel itself and the equalizer setting of it, everybody has the passive EQ. And doesn't this look familiar? We talked about it not too long ago. This is based on the Pultec style EQ. And we have other passive EQs in here as well. The Tube EQ is also a passive equalizer, and this is based on the Tube Tech equalizer of a very similar nature. Also, Pultec made an EQ just like this as well, and there's a lot of other manufacturers who make passive EQs. Manly is another one. The Massive Passive is a very well-known passive EQ. When we're talking about active EQs, we can then go into something like the Alpine 550. This might sound familiar from a console we were talking about not too long ago. The Vintage 3 bands, just the Vintage that everyone has, or the Solar 69. You may or may not have known what a passive or active EQ was doing to your signal, and I hope now you do know. But I want to know, what are some of your uses for a passive EQ over an active EQ? or an active EQ over a passive EQ. Let me know how you use both in the comments below. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.